السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Good to see you in my weekly lecture after a long time despite the fact I have delivered three talks over the last week in London, uh, Birmingham and Market. But today I wish you happiness and joy and everything good for you inshallah. Wherever you are, whenever you are, whether you are Muslims or non-Muslims, doesn't make any difference for me. My wish is for everybody. Why I'm talking about apostasy and about atheism and about godlessness today? I was shocked to see one of my colleagues, whom I was working with him about more than 15 years ago and he was doing his GCSE level very bright, very good, very intelligent young man he went back to his country where he came from to find a job, a very prestigious job then the Arab Spring came in this region and he started to become confused with the speeches of the religious people, the scholars, the revolutionary people. And they had a big shock. And they came back to UK three years ago in this state of being, I don't know to call him names. The second one is a young girl whom I met her mother six months ago in Istanbul. Her husband was killed during the Arab Spring in one of the countries. I wish that he is a shaheed, inshallah, a martyr, inshallah. The young of the girls, the youngest of amongst the girls started to have these symptoms of moving away from the deen. Why did you take my father? Why Allah took my father? Why Allah deprived me from my father? Why, 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 why? In my recent tour in Turkey, I delivered five, six speeches to young people from our background. And I have been told by one of the activists, it's one of our sisters, her name is Mazla al-Sheikh, that she had a group in this, in the area where she is living, and she's trying to counsel them. First of all, I did, did not put the names of the people who, write, who helped me. It's, it's Ahmed al-Sheikh from Idlib, Ahmed al-Hayt from uh, Sudan, Abdurrahman Nahas from Birmingham, and Najla al-Sheikh from Kirlis in uh, Turkey. Apostasy. Simple definition. Don't go outside this definition. I reject, not me. I reject, not me, the presence of God. There is no God on earth or in heaven or anywhere. No way. This is the simplest. Don't let the philosopher to take you to the side way or to the alleys to confuse you and to confuse community. This is the simplest definition of atheism or godlessness or apostasy. In the history, it's not recently, it's been there for centuries. Philosophers, theologians wrote about it in the Arab world, in Europe. This is before the, uh, the, the, the discovery, what we call nowadays, America. So it was there. It's nothing new. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept sending messengers and prophets to guide those people to the creation of the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of those prophets we don't know. We know a few. But he sent many, many that you can't imagine. Not a recently developed phenomena. It was there centuries ago in Europe and Arabia. Two types of apostasy as Ahmad al-Sheikh told us, first of all, the absolute atheism. 
Okay? Which means the absolute denial of the presence of a God. No God whatsoever. And those people using theological and the philosophical hypothesis to prove the non-existence of God. This is one type of atheism. The second one, which is the weaker one, which is, we call it negative. What is this? I am not convinced for the evidence brought to me by those believers who listen or follow certain prophets and messengers. This is not good enough for me. But they did not declare the ultimate or the absolute absence or rejection of the presence of God. These two are there in the discussion, on the discussion. Theology of apostasy, the four points you need to look at it. Let, let, let me talk to you about something. I am not a theologian. I'm not an imam. I'm not a faqih. I'm not a scholar. And I'm not a, a social professor. I am a worker who find this kind of people are suffering from it. I'm raising it with you to see what are the causes and how we see such causes. But don't consider me as a scholar of religion. What are the types of theology of apostasy? First one is absolute rejection of the presence of God. And those beings like me, you, animals, birds, mountains are just coincidence. It's a mere co coincidence. The second theology is rejection of the life after death, resurrection, hell and heaven, day of judgment. The third category is denying of the miracles of the prophets and messengers of God. No, 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 no. It's not logic. It's illogic. It cannot be happening. And no, no, no. Jesus could be able, could not be able to feed those thousands of people or give them water. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi could not be able to do this. Moses could not be able to cross the, uh, the, 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 the sea. And so on. And Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam also cannot be just being thrown by uh, into the middle of the fire and it become no fire. No. And, uh, and this kind of, of the stick of Moses, of Moses Alayhi Salaam, is just a mystic theory of those people who believe in, in, in Moses. So they don't believe in the miracles of the prophets. The other last one is denial of the moral principles such as justice and others. So it goes from the rejection of God, then day of judgment, resurrection, heaven and hell, then the miracles of the prophets, then their principles themselves. Is apostasy or godlessness is a phenomena or not? Yes and no. Some people are trying to enlarge it, explode it. Some people are trying to minimize it. But it's there anyway. This depends on the different societies, cultural beliefs, traditional customs, and so on and so on. We made a study on my, on my Facebook page. 17 people actually are engaged or will engage in it. Eight women and nine men, that means that's 47 percent of the people who responded to these two questions are, were women. What were the questions? First one, what are the causes of apostasy or atheism? The second one suggested solution to deal with it. Clear? 47 percent were women. I'm very happy. Results? It was for the causes, number of the causes, 41. 41 causes for apostasy or godlessness. What are they? Look at this. Number one, number one is 12, which is about 29.3%. Okay? The individual, himself or herself. It is in me, I can prevent myself from disbelieving in God or the presence of God. It's me. 29.3%. Number two, which is 28, 26.8, 11 uh, uh, causes, 
Muslim preachers and so-called religious leaders. It is them. See, nearly 60, 55%, 60% are between myself and those people who stand up and claim that they are preachers of religions. That they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Number three is five, five causes is third point of third point two percent is the media and the social media. Number four, religious institutions, seven point three percent. Number uh, uh, five is role model, seven point three percent. Number uh, six or seven, uh, 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 economic situation to four point nine percent. Then 2.4% in each of those, globalization, demoralization, despair, ignorance, education system, and parents. All this. But the top two are the individual himself or herself, then the religious preachers, so-called religious leaders. They constitute uh, uh, 56%, both of them. Let me, let's talk about some examples now of these categories. Number one, the individual, which is 29.3%. Those individuals who suffer from emptiness have nothing to do all the time around me and they're sitting doing nothing. This emptiness led me to go wild. That's why the Prophet said two gifts from Allah that individual like me and yourself have to be thankful to him first one is a time if you have got enough time on your table to do something the second one is health emptiness is number one number two is losing self-confidence i'm not confident in god or the presence of god why 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 number three is not willing to be controlled by religious restrictive boundaries why should you tell me what time you wake up in the morning, what time you go to bed, what time you pray, what time you stand, what time you, what you eat, what you this, what you drink, what whom you mix with and what to do, 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 I don't want any restriction, get away. You and Azubillah Mishajim, do your God. Number uh, four is the many natural disasters and man-made disasters and conflict. Why God is letting us to suffer? God should be the God of mercy, compassion, forgiveness, love, care, and others. Okay? Number five, the harsh collective. What does it mean? When I do something wrong, awful, you find the community reaction be very bad. Slashing my throat. Slashing my thoughts. Slashing my dreams. Why don't the, my community does not take me by the hand. This harsh, uh, uh, the harsh collective of the strange brother. Number six is the wrong reading of the history. I, as a young man or a young woman, got the history wrong. Number seven or eight, repeatedly receiving shocking news. Every day I watch television, oh my God, 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 oh my God. What is this? Losing confidence, living in despair. Number eight or nine, if I start to suffer from serious illness like cancer or my mother, who left me at the age of five. Why Allah? Why God do you leave my mother to leave me at the age of five? Why do you leave the father to leave to die before his children embark on graduated? You are not the mercy, the God of mercy, the God of compassion. No. This is this is this is wrong. Because Allah is more merciful to all of us than any one of us collectively. Those people who love boys, not girls, those false religiosity, yeah, false religiosity, and some people love, uh, love, yeah, uh, yeah, show something different what they have. They are in, 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 inside agnostic, outside Muslims or religious people. This on the individual. This is the, some examples of the Muslims or religious preachers, not only Muslims. 
religious preachers who uh, call themselves religious leaders. Not all of them, by the way. I said some of them. Bad examples. They give bad examples, especially after the Arab Spring. Bad examples. Let people to hate religion. Through what? Through their bad manners and the aggressive speeches. They keep frightening people, scaring people, cursing people, cursing everyone. Those group of people will let the youngsters to get away out of the religion. They speak languages in the Muslim the church that young people don't understand it. So what this man or this woman is talking about? Making Islam or any religion irrelevant to the society. Always talking about history, nostalgic people, delivering ceremonial and sedative speeches. Oh, oh. So what? This happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. Not tackling the contemporary issues that are affecting the society, talking only about history. Okay? Talking about the ritual of the religion of Islam, the length of the trousers, the, the color of the beard, whether we are going to use hunna, hinna, or mascara, whether we are going to use kohl, or whatever you call it, uh, the color of the dress, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Unrelated subject. It's, it's, it's essential, but not the main work that we are doing. Abusing the religion and making the religion a part of the political and the military conflict. Why should you make the religion a part of the conflict? A part of the divide? A part of the military conflict? A part of the cultural divide and theological divide? A part of the social, the, the, the racial intolerance, the ethnic cleansing and the immoral behavior against minorities? I say it again. Abusing religion and making it a part of political and the military conflict cultural and theological divide, racial intolerance, ethnic cleansing, and immoral behavior against minorities. Those kind of individuals make linking religion with the causes of military conflicts. What's that to do with my religion? Or the natural disaster? Yes, you know, you have this flood because God does not like your society. What is that? And you tell me God is mercy. Yes, God is mercy. But he gets you the flooding he gets you the earthquake, so he does not like you. Sidelining all the moderate mainstream and more balanced scholar, uh, learned scholars. Category number three, some examples, the media and social media. Tarnishing, 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 tarnishing the credibility and the integrity of the religion and the religious scholars. Excessive spread, excessively spreading doubts in religion and the principles. Spreading strange, disturbing, and non-authentic religious opinions. Fine, very strange opinion. You know, on the media a few years back, to say that it's haram that a man and a woman in the office sit together without anybody else sitting there. You know what the opinion was? Uh, this, this, this colleague of him has to breastfeed him to make him like his sister. What, 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 what a strange, stupid and awful things to be put on the media and to be electrically and whoosh, everybody was commenting on it. Stupid. Religious institution becoming very weak misfunded, sidelined. No role for you. We just only use you for the burial and the circumcision and the marriage and the death. Through liberty and freedom of speech, spreading the anti-religious ideas and ideology to combat the religious institution. The most important one happening to the religious institutions, protesizing the religious institution and removing the true credible and the learned religious scholars from them. This is extremely important. Role models. 
after the Arab Spring, and everywhere, not only Arab Spring, in non Arab countries, happened. They disappeared, vanished, especially after revolutions, becoming corrupt. And some of my brothers were listening to the discussion behind the camera. Their behavior behind the camera was awful and was absolutely different to their behavior in front of the camera. They become, in front of the camera, they become angelical. Behind the camera, they become devilish. Some of them, not all of them. Fall into the political trap and become a part of the political machine. Economical situation, the rise of unemployment, an unemployed young man and young woman who was in, at home for three, four, five years, did not have any proper job after having the qualification, what to do? The last one is poverty. Solution. Yes, we have to have solutions. And the solution, first of all, don't ever treat these individuals who run away from religion as sick people. But on the contrary, deal with them naturally in the best human manners as, they, as they, their sons. And, the, and this is what I saw in these two families which I mentioned. The one in UK and the one in Turkey. Counseling such individuals in confidence and respond to their needs. They need A and B and C and keep things in confidence. Humanizing and modernizing the religious institution. We have to invest, to put money to invest in the religious institution. Raising the society's religious awareness and in particular the youth amongst them. Awareness program about the religion and its value for the society. Making religion an important positive component of our society and letting it into becoming problem solutions rather than itself becoming the problem. Giving more freedom and spaces to the mainstream learned credible scholars. Engaging the youth in a true and real social change program. Responding to the social and psychological, social, psychological, political, and the cultural needs of whom? Of the young people. Bending the religious in consciousness and moral values on a well structured, relevant research program, not haphazardly done like what we see in different places. Develop psychosocial support program and scheme, investing in volunteering programs and making it an essential part of educational syllabus in schools, universities and workplaces. This is some of the solution for what we talked about. Let us be optimistic. I was listening to a talk by one of the uh, Moroccan lecturers, uh, Moroccan philosophers, his name Abu Zaid al muqri uh, al -Ma Abu Zaid, Abu Al Mukri Al Idrisi, Al Idrisi, not Al Marzuk. The mistake here. Can you Al Idrisi, Al Marzuk? That's Tunisian. Al Idrisi. Okay, about apostasy in Doha. He said, apostasy is a vocal, is more vocal than real social problem. More listened to by certain individuals of the media who promote it as a phenomenon than being a reality affecting society. It's, it's not a phenomenon. It is just a part of the things that society and young people are talking about. That's what he said. It's more vocal than the real problem. That's what he said. In a study he said, five years ago, they found what? Those who declared apostasy and the atheism, the atheists are 2.1 percent. We reject the presence of God. Okay? That's what he found. Those who are in doubt of the presence of God and the phenomena of the presence of God 
not convinced, are 12%. But those who are believing in God, His presence and manifestation are 85.%. What you see on media, on social media, and others is not more than this 14%. It's less because 2.1% only believe in the non-existence of God or reject the existence of God and 12% have doubt, but 86% believe in God. He said, the value of this research is not in the statistics, but in the time when it was conducted. Why? Because we are living now in the time of freedom, or at the time of freedom, liberty, and uh, freedom of speeches, not the time of inquisition, which happened in Andalusia before. In such a time, the atheist can, such a time now, the atheist can speak freely about their beliefs. That's why the accuracy of such a report could be up to 90% or even more. So in conclusion, it is there as a part of the problem of society. We need to look at the most important two factors, which is me as an individual and the religious preachers as well. And then invest in religious institution to decrease such problem. Thank you very much. God bless you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And uh, see you, inshallah, from a different country, from a different city, from a diff at a different time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa